Hello, everybody. I'm Tommy Clayton, an open Syed teacher and writer. And I'm excited to dive into lesson two. This is one of my favorite lessons. Um, and so today we're going to look at uh, how we got to lesson two, the lesson at a glance, some key moments, and some material management tips and tricks. So let's dig in. So let's recap a little bit about how we got to this lesson. We're coming off of the anchoring phenomena, which kids uh, talked a lot about things that sometimes break and sometimes don't in a collision. And so we figured out that um, things need to make contact for that to happen. And there's probably some different factors and variables that are involved in that. And maybe those have something to do with why things get damaged or why they don't in a collision. So we are wondering a little bit more about like what actually causes the changes in motion and shape of objects when they are colliding. So let's take a look at this lesson at a glance. We're gonna look at some of the high level moments in this lesson. So this lesson is an investigation lesson. Uh, it happens over two days. Um, the material preparation takes about 50 minutes, um, but that's gonna pay off for future lessons. Um, we have a hands-on investigation, several of them happening. The students do not need their individual devices. And there is an additional related video for how to prepare uh, the sugar glass. We'll talk more about that in a few moments. So looking at day one, we navigate in, um, coming off of uh, the anchor and thinking about like what kind of observations we wanted to make. Uh, and so that leads us to want to drop and break some stuff. We'll talk more about that. And we discover as we do that, that there were some challenges in that. So we want to share those. And that's going to lead us to want to think about ways that we can control that collision. And so we're going to explore horizontal collisions using a track setup. And then uh, we're going to close the lesson by thinking about some of the patterns that we saw from those collisions. On day two, we come in and we sort of problematize that like we saw some stuff, but we don't have exactly clear patterns. And uh, we think it's because things were happening really fast. So this motivates us to want to look at some slow motion videos. And then we're going to take all that evidence, come together in our scientist circle, um, and come to a consensus on what is causing the changes in motion and shape of those colliding objects. And then that's going to lead us to want to brainstorm some additional materials to test in lesson three. So uh, we figure out on day one that collisions happen fast and they are very hard to control. And if we use a track and a cart, that can help us figure out more about the collisions. On day two, we figure out that collisions can cause objects involved to change motion and or change shape, um, that there is an energy transfer occurring during a collision, and there are uh, forces between the objects when they make contact during that collision. So let's take a look at some key moments of this lesson. So after we navigate in, we decide we want to break some stuff. And you will see in the teacher guide that there's not a lot of details here about the procedure or about what kids should be doing. That is by design, okay? That's totally intentional. And the reason we are doing this is for kids to understand that we can't just randomly smash stuff. Although it's really fun and exciting and cool, we need this moment for the kids to understand that we need a different setup and we need to measure some things. And so it's intentionally ambiguous here. The kids can design whatever procedure they want. And um, we are going to use some really inexpensive stuff for them to uh, drop some things. The, the most important part for you as the teacher is, one, to keep everybody safe. Um, and two, you want to really draw out with the kids their challenges. So as you're walking around and you're asking them, like, did things change motion? Did things change shape? We're trying to draw out that like it happened really fast and we're not sure. And we miss our targets. Like sometimes we try to drop something on something and we miss and that's really frustrating or it like happens at the floor. And so that's like too far away for us to see what's going on. Okay. So this is intentionally uh, very, very ambiguous um, and lean into that a little bit and let the kids kind of discover that you can't just randomly uh, break a bunch of stuff doesn't really help us answer any questions. So we're going to discuss after that our problems with that. And kids are going to likely say that <clears throat> it was hard to control things, that it happened too fast. And so we're going to introduce this idea of using carts to study collisions 
and um, be able to study those horizontally, right? So move the collision up where we can see it and actually make some really clear observations. And so the kids are going to use the carts. Um, they make choices about what to put in the carts as far as the washers. Uh, again, they can make whatever choices they want. That's okay. At this point, we are uh, letting the kids explore. And um, the end result here is that they're going to see that in almost every case, there is a change in motion in a collision, no matter what objects we use. The only um, time when there isn't a change in motion is if we actually hold an object. And again, they can decide if they want to hold an object, let it run free, totally fine. Again, we're just trying to let them try different things um, to, to see what the outcomes are. They will see that um, things sometimes uh, change shape, but not always. And sometimes even both things could change motion. So in part seven of the lesson, right? So after we share our patterns and our noticings, we realize that like it's still happening too fast. And so this motivates us to want to slow it down. And so we watch some slow motion videos of these uh, collisions. And these are prepared. Um, they are provided with uh, YouTube links in the materials. But if the kids want to film the collisions with their phones, great, go for it if you're okay with that. They're going to figure out that most things change shape. So the CD case, the clay, um, the metal rings, uh, the rubber, but the golf ball doesn't seem to change shape. And they might not be totally convinced about the rubber, and that's okay. Again, here we're, we're just trying to get them to puzzle over what things change shape and what things don't. So it's okay if they're not totally um, in agreement about what changes shape and what doesn't. So that leads us to have uh, to come together to have a building understandings discussion. And we're gonna develop this interactions in the system poster. And we're gonna consider collisions in two different perspectives. Uh, from the energy perspective, what's happening during a collision, really thinking about how energy is transferred from one object to another, and that causes the change in motion that we're seeing. And uh, that the forces, right, there is a force when things touch, and that force is what may be causing something to change shape. But it seems like that doesn't always happen, and we're not totally sure if every single time in a collision there is a change in shape uh, between the things. So um, that is going to lead us to uh, our next steps. And so we're wondering, like, does everything bend or change in a collision? Maybe we just can't see it. We're very unsure. We have some spirited debate about that. And so we end the lesson by brainstorming a list of some really rigid objects. Like we might want to test like wood and steel and glass, right? To see if those things actually do bend or maybe they just break or maybe they don't bend at all during a collision. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about material management tips and tricks here. So um, when you do the breaking stuff portion where we just sort of let the kids free form um, break some things, uh, <laughs> the first thing I learned is you need to set a timer for this. Kids will spend a lot of time just breaking stuff and we just need them to break enough stuff to really see that uh, it doesn't tell us anything. Um, so set a timer, maybe 10 minutes, 15 max. Um, if possible, see if you can get some dust pans or brooms uh, for anything that they may um, make a mess with and have them sweep that stuff up quickly. Um, no added force. So we're just dropping things from like arm height. We're not standing on chairs or desks or anything like that. Um, we are not throwing stuff. We are just dropping things or dropping things on things, right? We're going to make sure that we're wearing uh, safety goggles during this point for the whole time. Um, and so in the teacher guides, it recommends you can use things like CD cases, plastic containers. Um, you can use books, different spheres like golf balls, tennis balls. Um, lacrosse balls, whatever the case, baseballs, um, paint stirrers are great, um, noodles, anything that'll sort of like uh, break pretty easily. Um, and you may want to uh, crowdsource some materials. Um, you can uh, think about like people bringing in some plastic containers, whatever the case may be. Um, again, each student, each group maybe needs to test one item just to get a sense of that uh, dropping stuff doesn't really allow us to answer a lot of questions. In the material guides, it talks about preparing candy glass. It is worth the preparation. Um, it is 
really great for the kids to see the way that it breaks and it's very, very fragile. Uh, the candy behaves kind of like get glass without um, being really sharp or dangerous. So um, definitely worth the preparation. You'll for find more information about that in the video. Um, and I highly recommend doing that with the, your kids. Okay, so when the kids work toward uh, the cart setups, um, gentle pushes will work best. If the kids really ram the carts into things, they're not going to see a whole lot of uh, information. So you want to remind them to, you know, give it a push, but they don't need to like push it as hard as they absolutely can. You want to make sure that that CD case is free to move back and forth. So don't mount it against uh, a wall or something. Um, it's going to be mounted on the track with the um, tack and uh, free to move back and forth. If uh, the kids, uh, if you can have the kids put some washers in things, it does, if they're heavy, it does help for the kids to see things change shape. Um, I, as I indicated earlier, if you can let the kids uh, film things with, with their videos in slow motion, they'll really own those um, and get really into it. And these tracks we're going to re return to in future lessons. So don't take them down at the end of this lesson. If possible, leave them up. Um, and so some of that set off setup will pay off in the future lessons. All right. So, um, we introduce a lot of words in this lesson. Um, we earned the word damage in, uh, our, uh, part three and that definition you're going to work on with the kids. So you're going to develop that and use their language. Uh, just try to help, uh, facilitate that, uh, damage means that things, uh, change shape and they may use words like cracked or bent, broken in pieces, whatever the case may be. Um, during the uh, building understandings discussion in part eight, we uh, reinforce words like force from elementary school and kinetic energy from our uh, CUPS unit. So we bring that back and from several other units um, and add that to our word wall since we'll be using that quite often. There are a couple different posters um, in this lesson. So you're gonna bring in the different collisions poster from lesson one. And uh, you're going to use that at the beginning of the lesson. And then you're going to develop this interactions in the system poster. Um, we will use this convention again in several lessons, but we are not going to use this specific poster because um, we're going to add uh, new information to it as time goes on. So that's going to do it here for lesson two. Um, I think you're going to find that this is one of the most memorable lessons that kids will experience. Um, the moment when they actually get to break stuff in school is something that sticks with them for a very, very long time. And I think you're going to find the kids are going to be really engaged in the end of this lesson when they're talking about if if all solid things bend or not. Come back and join us for lesson three and find out more about how they investigate if all solid things bend or not during a collision. Thank you.